The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us for our webcast today. Uh, we'll be presenting Creating Photorealistic Images of Your Designs in Creo. I'm Matt Tagnarelli, and I will be your moderator for today's uh, webcast. Dan Harlan, a Senior Application Engineer at BWI, will be our presenter for today's webcast. We'll begin with a brief BWI intro, who we are, how we help manufacturers with solutions across the product lifecycle. Then we'll go right into the presentation around creating photorealistic images of your designs in Creo, along with a live demo, and then wrap up with a quick Q&A at the end. You're currently in listen-only mode, but you can write in your questions throughout the webinar, and we'll make sure to answer them at the end of the webcast. Barry Waymiller International is a division of Barry Waymiller, a $2.4 billion company that provides capital equipment, engineering, and IT consulting for a diverse array of industries. With more than 130 years of manufacturing experience, Barry Waymiller has a rich blend of capabilities and legacies of more than 80 plus businesses united by the company's strong values, innovation, service, and fierce commitment to people whose lives we touch through the course of our business. Barry Waymiller continues to grow rapidly with more than 1,000 team members and 100 plus locations worldwide, servicing customers in all corners of the world. Barry Waymiller International is the global provider of business and technology solutions of the mid-market manufacturing domain. Our unique business model enables us to offer global ex expertise and consultative services while having strong local presence in the markets we serve. With operations strategically located to meet client needs throughout the US, Europe, and Middle East, Asia, Pacific, BWI offers world-class engineering, enterprise, IT, and application managed services solutions that enable its clients to achieve competitive edge in their marketplace. Our global headquarters is in Atlanta, Georgia, with additional offices in North America, Europe, and India. One of the biggest challenges today is supporting new applications as well as legacy applications. The pace of change of technology requires companies to constantly train and retrain their staff, not mentioning dealing with retention and retirement. With cost pressures mounting, senior management is often looking to optimize costs, lowering the cost of support in order to fund new capabilities. BWI offers a large portfolio of managed services to meet your needs. No engagement is too large or too small. We can customize a service solution that can scale with your organization. We offer solutions that can manage tier one and tier two support across a wide array of products. Barry Waymiller has a rich manufacturing legacy, tracing back to 1885, servicing all sizes of businesses ranging from small and mid-sized to Fortune 1000 manufacturers. We provide solutions for a diverse group of customers, spanning the globe in Europe, Asia, and the US, from all companies from large household names to everything in between. And with that, uh, we will we'll move on and make Dan the presenter, and he'll go into uh, creating photorealistic images of your designs for Creo. Switch the presenter here, Dan, and we should now. Excellent. So, all right, you got your screen. All right, thank you. All right. Welcome, everybody. So, you know, um, rendering in Creo has always kind of been something that, you know, I mean, I've, I've been around Creo. Uh, wildfire pro engineer for a lot of times and you've seen some cool stuff and it's always kind of been one of those things that you go you know I'm not an artist but um, let me tell you it really doesn't take somebody with a art degree or art training um, it's really don't be intimidated by it it's really not as difficult as it might seem there's a lot of there's a lot of um, you can really get good images right out of the box with just a few settings. There's a few things that I want to talk about um, 
for those of you who are looking at rendering or getting started, you'll hear some different terms, especially if you look, you know, on some of the forums or some of the legacy stuff, you'll hear photo render, you'll hear photo lux, you'll also hear key shot. Um, these are different terms that different technologies, rendering images. So photo render, this was the original photorealistic rendering in Creo. It's now included out of the box for everybody. Okay, so anybody can get, uh, uh, can photo render their things. There's There are some limitations to it. Um, if you have the advanced rendering extension, is what it's called in Creo 3.0, this is the Photolux rendering image, or engine. You'll see there's a, there's a whole bunch of enhancements in really getting photorealistic images with the uh, advanced rendering extension, ARX. You can see they're listed here excuse me, and um, there are things that you can play with. You really don't have to. The one thing that we will talk about a lot is high dynamic range imaging for scenes. Those are the HDR scenes that we'll talk about and you'll see how they apply. And then at the very end, I'll also talk about kind of what's coming in 4.0 because guess what? There's a new rendering image, <laughs> rendering engine coming in Creo 4 and that's powered by Keyshot. That's the Keyshot engine. But it really doesn't change a whole lot um, in terms of usability. It does make things easier, more powerful, but again, uh, don't think of the, the ARX as being intimidating. The first thing to kind of think about is appearances. So, um, when we we have to apply an appearance to different parts, different surfaces, there's three aspects of appearances. So there's a whole bunch of advanced materials or advanced appearances that come with the installation. We'll take a look at a, some of those, but they have they have besides color and highlight and shininess and translucence things like that. They also have bump maps and textures and decals that. Um, are here and they're also easy to create new appearances. So you may have different wood grains, you may have, you know, th this happens to be a diamond tread pattern, okay? These uh, textures and bump maps for this diamond tread pattern, you can see they're not particularly difficult to make. They can come off of photos that have been taken, okay? And they're real easy to use. The scenes, this is what you're going to set your model in, okay? The scene or the room. ARX uses or allows the use of HDR images. These, and I, I have one here on the screen, these are not regular photographs. Um, the last time I looked, um, there's only a few prototype types of professional cameras that take HDR images. What happens is, you overlay graphically. You use software to overlay multiple images. You'll notice on this image, there's a couple things about it that's not just a photograph. Um, the, the first thing that you can notice is the perspective. It looks like a, a panoramic or a wide angle camera lens. And that's important because this gets wrapped as our room, as our setting. The other thing you'll notice is things are really bright and there's also a high level of detail in the shadows. So, you know, if you take a normal picture with your camera, you'll notice that you either capture the bright stuff or you capture the shadows. You can't capture both. Well, with an HDR image, you have that. You also have uh, luminescence in an HDR image. So this will actually reflect onto the model. So not only will you see the, the scene reflected in the surfaces of the model, but the color of the scene will actually impact the model, just like if you were in, taking a picture of a, of a real product in a studio or out in the real world. Okay, um, So without ARX, you, you can still see the HDR images, but you can't render with them. You have to use traditional, what we call rooms, floors and walls, where you apply an, a, an appearance to those different surfaces. Okay. And then we'll look at all the different types of lights. There's all sorts of different lights you can apply. 
uh, and you can position them and control them individually. There's a bunch of render, rendering options and I think this is where people get overwhelmed or intimidated. When they see all these options, they stop, stop and kind of go, ooh, you know, what do I pick? Well, you know what? I'll show you. In general, you can ignore almost all of those and not worry about them. Just use the preset, what are called scenes, okay? And then whether or not you want shadows, there's a couple of things to do there, um, okay? There are some config.pro options and then the help, there's a bunch of information in help. There's a whole section on rendering. Finally, the other thing, here's an image I took off the PTC community. There's actually a group within PTC community called the ARX community. That's a great place to go to get tutorials, videos, materials, appearances, okay? So here's a, here's a standard model they use so that you can see, hey, if I apply, in this case, a brush stainless steel or I put on galvanized steel, how is that going to impact? What's the difference between a matte finish and a, and a this and a that, okay? So what I want to do is pull up Creole. I'm in 3.0, and here I just happen to have a fan model. No big deal. The first thing to look at is notice if I go in and do shading with reflections, this is my base. I start getting rendering right here. Okay, You'll start noticing colors, appearances, textures, bitmaps on my models. Okay. Um, now I can come into the render tab and this is where if I turn on my perspective view, this is where it puts it in a scene. This is the HDR image. Okay. You'll notice that this has impacts on um, how, how the model itself looks. You can actually see reflections of the room in, in the parts, in the surfaces. Okay. One of the examples, well, we'll wait to get there. Um, here, what I wanted to do was talk about appearances, kind of the first thing. I have a bunch of appearances. These 200 plus advanced materials, if you look, there's this Photolux library. Okay, and this is included when you install Creo. You don't have to worry about this. You can go in a course, make more. But I can come in here and I can say, okay, I want to look at um, some frosted glass or maybe just some regular glass. And so here, Creo already has four different glasses that I can simply select them. I can um, apply them and put them on that object. So you can see here, now I can actually see the internals. So I haven't worried about, oh, going in and using uh, my environment set up to set transparencies. This is glass, so naturally I can see through it. I get reflections on it, um, get some really cool effects. It still casts a shadow, all of that. Creating other appearances, okay? So if you go into the appearance manager, it's not difficult to create an appearance. You'll see um, that you give it colors and so on, but what I can do is um, I talked about those bump maps and textures and decals. This is where I would go and I would turn them on. Okay, I could put an image on there. I can select an image. Um, you can use specific appearance image files. They're TX3 and TX4 files. But you know what? You can also just use JPEGs. So if you've taken a picture of a texture that you want to use, or a decal that you have, you can simply use those. Okay. Um, one of the things to, to be aware of is I can also render in other modes of Creo. So I've gone in, you can see I've applied a scene here. There's a bunch out of the box, okay, that you can just apply. These have different backgrounds, they have different um, room settings. I like this industrial one, okay, and that's why I've done that, um, is put it here in this industrial room. 
excuse me. I've got ability to control lights. I can determine whether or not a light casts a shadow. Okay, so I can control which lights are casting shadows. Um, if you take a picture of a product, if you give it to a professional engineer, they're going to actually try to light it so that there are no shadows or there's very few or very soft shadows. Again, I can control those similar types of effects here so that when I render it, the shadow is appropriate. Okay. Um, one of the other things, you can look at all these render setups and really this is where, so, so in the lights, whether or not it casts a shadow, that's one thing you're going to want to play with. And then really coming over here, if you have the advanced rendering extension, you have the option to choose the photo lux renderer. And that's what you want to do. And then if you just simply do draft high maximum, depending upon what you want, and then control your output. I can output to the window here. I can output to uh, JPEG or TIFF. There's all sorts of different stuff and resolutions. Okay, if I control that, I really don't have to worry about any of the other settings for rendering. One of the things to note is um, this this doesn't have an animation, but if you use the animation tool inside of Creo, you can actually render your animations. If you use Mechanism, okay, and this is where um, I did an example that I'll pull up here in just a second, but if you run an analysis, if you look at the playback, I can also go in and I can actually capture and render, okay, so that I get this motion rendered in the setting, and that's one of the ones I want to pull up. There's actually two of them. Um, the first one, this one I love because if you look at this, Look at the reflections. You have you have a, a polished surface here, so I'm seeing the reflections of, and this happens to be a decal underneath the hands. So I'm seeing the appearance of this underlying object, right? And not only that, in the glass, I'm seeing the reflection of the lid. I think that's really pretty cool. And I'll just go ahead and let this play through. You can see as it goes through, I've got motion, I've got rendering of the images as it goes around. One of the other ones that I did, and I happened to just do this one this morning, was this fan. So here I have the fan sitting on a, a surface. I didn't do this one nearly at the quality level that the, the watch is done at, but you can see this actually is 100 different rendered images put into, okay? And all I did was exactly what I was showing you here in Creo. I hit capture and I left it the height and width. I said photo rendered frames and I said okay. I'm not going to render it because guess what? It takes oh 20 minutes, and it uses up all my computer resources so that my audio would drop out. You wouldn't see my you know screens and all that type of stuff. Go to meeting wouldn't keep up with it. Um, a couple of the other so I showed you those two images. Um, here's an example of the the this fan rendered. So here you can come in and see, I actually have depth of field turned on. So what I've done here with this one, with depth of field, you can notice that it's real sharp through here, and then it starts getting fuzzy out here. That's because I'm simulating a camera that only has a specific depth of field, and if you're not at that focus, guess what? Things get blurry. So that's intentional in this image, is to have blurry edges so that it looks, again, like it was taken with a with a photograph. Okay. And then returning to um, so again, rendering is really easy. It takes once you send it to render, it takes a few minutes. So that's why I'm not going to actually do that. But the the setup again, all I need to do is turn on my perspective, put it in a scene. Okay. Select my quality level, choose my output, and I'm ready to go.
and I just say go ahead and render the window and it will go and it'll start processing it and come back and do it and give it to me. Um, here if we look at kind of the some of the last things um, let's see is what's coming up in 4.0 so I mentioned that in 4.0 you're going to be having um, a new render engine there's a few things in terms of um, in the core so if you don't have ARX what you'll see is um, the in graphics toolbar still has that shade with reflections which puts you into a, like a render mode Okay. You also on the in graphics toolbar you have some uh, options to include occlusions. So this is where the part casts shadows on itself, and whether or not you want to see it with the scene background, that HDR image that we talked about. You won't have a render tab unless you have um, the re advanced rendering extension, which in 4.0 becomes called the Creo rendering extension. Okay, that then you actually has a, have a new application mode. So instead of having a render tab, you'll go to applications, rendering. Okay, and here's a couple of images out of 4.0. Um, and it uses what I find very fascinating. And um, now that the sneak peek's over, I can't, I can't show you this to you real time. But it's really cool when you see a video or when you see the Creo rendering extension. It does what's called real-time ray tracing. So if I turn on uh, real-time ray tracing and I spin my model, it looks all pixelated. And it's really bizarre. You're like, well, this sucks, right? But it doesn't. Because what it does is if you don't move the model, it is continuing to render and it's doing what's called ray tracing. So it's it's taking the light source and it's mathematically calculating where the photon goes. Where does it bounce off? What colors does it pick up? And all that. So as you leave the model there stationary, it refines itself and it gets more and more and more refined. So what you do is you say, okay, when you go to render, instead of saying a quality level, what you do is you say how much time do I want to spend rendering this model? Do I want to spend 10 minutes? Do I want to spend 20 or 30 minutes? And of course, depending upon your hardware, that will impact what comes out. But it's really kind of cool to see real time your screen update as it refines and refines this graphical model. So hopefully you see there's some really cool, powerful stuff you can do with rendering. You can do your mechanisms, you can do your static models, you can put it in different scenes in different rooms, um, okay? Different settings, environments, however you want to call that, okay? And that's it, um, like I said, because of the time involved to render and that it, more importantly, it cuts out my mic and it cuts out my screen when we do render. I'm not going to do a, one live, but what questions do you guys have around rendering? You know, I love I love seeing all the reflections here. Hey, Dan, we did have a couple of questions come in. Um, one of them is, do we need ARX to have access to the PhotoLux library? The, so the PhotoLux library of materials comes standard for everybody. So if you just go into your appearances, you'll see right here under the library, PhotoLux library. And there's no, there's nothing in these 200 plus different uh, appearances. There's nothing that you need to do or worry about. Okay. And then we, we have one other one for right now. Um, for uh, Creo 4.0, can you input a custom ray file as a light source? You know, I don't know. Th I don't know that. Okay. All right. And one, one other one here real quick, and then I'll let you get back into it. Um, could you explain how to use lights effectively and show an example on a simple part. 
Yeah, so, you know, here, here I have up lights right here. There are some, def the scene will come, okay, so if I'm using one of the PTC scenes, it will have its, have some lights defined for it, but here, I can look right here, and I can simply grab this light, and I can drag it around. Notice, notice how the shadow changes, okay, so I can see how this light is impacting. This happens to be um, a default light. I can turn that light off. Okay, environment, I need the environment on if I'm going to see the background because the background with an HDR image is actually a light source. It has luminosity to it, um, but I can define other types of light. So I can define a, a light bulb or a light that simply um, um, is going to reflect in all directions. And you can see here, I can simply drag it around. I could come into my position tab and I can edit XYZ and the aim direction if it's not a light bulb, okay? So if it's not a light bulb, say I do a um, spotlight, or this is actually a source light, okay? I can, again, I can posi position it. Um, I can control the intensity of it. So you can see my model is actually changing as I change the intensity of this light, okay? Um, whether or not this one is going to show shadows. Okay, uh, I guess my intensity is off on that one. Um, yeah, so so lights are really pretty easy. For most of the most of the scenes, I simply use the default lights and then move them around. I can control whether or not they're fixed to the model if they're fixed to the room. Um, Get that up. What other questions on lights does anybody have? Uh, sorry, I'm just going through them here. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, this is this is going to be a different question. It's uh, we have gratings that our designers model using patterns. Can we simulate grading with rendering? Well, to some extent, right? Because I'm not gonna if I if I simply have a flat plate and I I can put a texture on that plate that simulates the grading. So I can have an appearance that I apply that has a a uh, texture map or a decal, either one over it, but if I want to see how that casts a shadow or how that impacts objects underneath it, I'm, I'm not going to get that, okay? But if your grading is, your, is effectively your flooring and you're not worried about what's visible on the other side of the grading, then absolutely, you simply just make an appearance, right, under your appearance, and you're going to give it a... Um, you're going to come into the map here, and you're going to give it a uh, either a decal or a texture, depending upon which way you want to go. Okay. But understand, also understand that um, you're not going to get the right mass properties because you're just dealing with an appearance over the over the grading. Other questions? Yep, yeah, we got actually a lot of questions. To be honest with you. All right. It's good because it's it's really pretty simple. So there's not a whole lot to spend time on. Okay. There's a um, you know one of them says they they don't see the PhotoLux library. It's an empty folder. Um, also, they don't have any scenes. Where is there is there a way that where they can download this or is it is so. Um, when you do your installation, I, I just reinstalled Creo 3 last night because I was updating to a new build. Um, and I'm on 110, which is the current build. And I didn't do anything special when I installed. Um, I did make sure that I, you know, I checked the appropriate things, the check boxes. Um, but you can either reach out to us or to tech support and say, hey, why don't I have these libraries? 
I'm not sure why they wouldn't have loaded. But you can also save save them. So if you once you create a custom scene, say you have that you're going to use for all your marketing brochures and you don't want to readjust it every time, you can save that scene and then you can share that scene. Um, in Creo 4 without CRX, can you still perform rendering operations such as moving lights and setting scenes or must the rendering extension be purchased? Um, you still have access to the scene backgrounds and to lights. Um, I don't know if you can if you can output a render or not. Okay. Because I, I don't have access to the beta builds of four, unfortunately. Sure. Um, back to another light question. How do you save light settings? Okay. So you can save those as part of the scene, or you can save those as, um, so if I go into render, for instance, I can save them as part of the scene, or simply under lights, again, I can simply save them. Okay, so they get saved as part of the scene once I once I have defined them. Okay. Um, can you show how to add your own JPEG image as a background? Sure. Sure. Let me. Create. Um, let's see. Where'd it go? Um, well, I would want to do an HDR image. If I'm just doing a JPEG image, I could do it at the room. Okay, so here I can come in here and I'm going to apply an appearance. So in this case, I would I would take a um, I'm going to take an existing appearance, create a new one. Uh, where'd it go? Okay, come to map. I can do a texture map as an uh, image, and let's see where did I put some images. Um, There's, there's one. So in this case, I've got to turn on that wall, apply that appearance, and when I render, it'll be there. It won't be there in this mode. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of funky, but it doesn't show it to me in this mode. But I can see that it's applied here to. Oh, I didn't mean to apply it to the ceiling. That's why. There. Uh, that's not going to look good, is it? Let me turn off the ceiling and apply that to the appropriate wall instead. Okay. Is that it? No. Yeah, there we go. Okay. You can see this one's not, uh, boy. That totally blew out, didn't it? Let me go and resume. There we go. My scale is completely off for some reason. Okay, other questions? Let me come back here. Yeah, uh, since you're talking about the HDR R images, HDR reflex images, do they reflect, reflect light then as well? Absolutely. That's part of what's defined in them is um, their uh, luminosity. And that's, uh, if we look at, I've got a couple, of, a couple of them here. Let's see, where did that one go? So he, here, 
they actually sh they have their own luminosity defined to them. That's part of what makes them an HDR image as opposed to just a JPEG or a TIFF. Um, and here's some more examples of them. And this company, Doge, they're the ones who provide the HDR images for PTC. And they do have, you can find different ones from them. Um, they, they have some samples as well as you can uh, purchase from them. This happens to be their sample pack. More questions? Oh yeah, you yeah, got lots. <laughs> Can you show how to apply a surface texture? A surface texture? Sure. Sure. I'm going to throw out of there for a second. So um, I've applied these appearances in the assembly. Um, you can do it also in the individual model. But say I come in and I want to apply, let's go in and apply wood to the blades. Oops, not stone, wood. Okay, let's uh, look at. Right. So instead of selecting the whole thing, I can just select um, a surface. Okay. And just like you would do in in regular Pro E Creo, I just select that individual surface. And now, oh, I thought I picked one with wood grain on it. Now it applies just to that surface. Again, most places you're going to pick the entire part. But you can do it individually, it just to a surface. Let's go find. Um, I know in the ash wood there was a nice one. So there, if I apply it to the whole part, you can see the wood grain there. Wood grain and stone and marble; those are ones there. Sometimes you do want to pick individual surfaces to apply them to so that you can get the grain orientation appropriately. Next, more? Uh, yeah. Can we automate the angle for the light source? For example, light of sun changes from sunrise to sunset. Um, no, not that I know of. Okay. I don't know if that capability is available in four, but it's not in three. Can you? You would have to. Go ahead. Uh, can you explain the difference between room orientation studio versus model, and how to use it? Um, so that's where when you're when you're looking at your lights and, and how things are set up in your scenes, um, I can determine whether or not I want um, the camera how I want it positioned. Okay, So like right now, this light is relative to the camera where I'm looking at. Um, if I want it to be locked to the model, I can lock it to the model and then even though as I spin the model around, it's going to stay put. Okay. So it's really just what the uh, reference coordinate system is. Okay, so you can think of it as what's my reference coordinate system? Is it is it linked to the model so that as I move the model around, it moves? Is it linked to the room or to the camera? So if I move the room around, it will move. Um, or to the, I'm not sure where studio comes in, how that's different than the room, but I, it has something to do with the scene. I haven't played with those in a while. More? Yep. Um, how do you adjust the position of the scene to the part if it's not in a proper default position? 
Um, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. When you come into the room here, you can have the model snap. Okay. Um, so in this instance, right, this will automatically snap it. But I can also come in here with the wheels, and I can change the position of the room, of the walls, and what, where the scene is going to be relative to the model. So that's what you're doing here under the room. Okay. Usually the snap will do a pretty good job. Next. Yeah. Uh, can I save a perspective setting? If I need to edit a model during a rendering, it toggles back to original view, and I can get back to my perspective view without repositioning from scratch. Um, if you if you set the scene, so if you save your scene, that should save where all your lights are, all of that type of stuff. And if you have your lights in your room configured relative to model versus uh, studio versus room, then that behave that'll control that behavior. Um, I don't think whether or not perspectives turned on or off will though. Okay, more? Yep. Um, how do you adjust position and scale of a model in a scene? Uh, it's a little tough to do. Um, you can just use it depending upon whether or not you have perspective on or not. It'll behave a little differently, but I could just use my mouse. So I can use uh, shift middle button versus, you know, uh, control middle button. I just use the mouse to move it around. You can also, again, use the relative to the room. So now if I come back to the scene, I'm a little bit higher than I was before. Okay. You will notice that the shadow gets cast or not upon the scene. So depending upon where I am relative to the floor, my shadow will look different in the scene. So it looks like it's floating because my floor is lower. Okay, the next one would be, can you render a X sectioned part? I have never tried. I don't know. Um, I would simply go into the view manager, right, or activate a cross section. No, that's not the cross section we want. Um, and try it. I've never tried. Now, if I go into render perspective, uh, looks like the answer is no. Yeah, because all of it's turned off. If I do draft and let's do output as window, I can render a region and try. Oh, uh, yeah, the answer is no. You'd have to make a cut. All right, we got, uh, let's see, one more. Anybody else? Go ahead, write on your questions. My Photolux library is there, but they don't apply properly. They just show a gray color. Um, they're also using Creo 2. Okay, so what you're not doing, you have to have shading with reflection turned on. 
Okay. If I don't have shading with reflection turned on, you can see I won't see all in, in two. This is a little bit different, but I won't see all of the material. I won't see all of the um, what's going on. Okay. And some of the materials you'll see, depending upon if they have textures, if they have bunt maps, if they have decals, without the shading with reflections turned on, they'll look different. And all you're seeing is the underlying color defined on the, um, yeah, well, they don't have it for this. Um, let me do it for another color. Oops. But all you're seeing is the underlying defined color for the object. Right here. This is all you're seeing. Without that shading with reflections turned on. More? Next? Uh, that's, uh, that's all we got at the moment uh, here. Okay. Most of them. Um, let me, uh, I'm going to take over here. We'll, we'll do some, some other business here, and if we have any more questions come in, we'll, we'll go to those. Uh, Sounds great. Thanks. So, uh, submit any more questions that you have, guys, um, and we will uh, we'll go through those as well. Um, so, as we're wrapping up here, all of our webcasts are archived. Um, you can reach those webcasts at uh, b-wi.com backslash webcasts um, to view at your convenience. Uh, it'll be posted to our YouTube page here um, later on this afternoon. Um, also, if you're looking to uh, take your Creo or windshield skills to the next level, uh, we do provide PTC certified training um, in six facilities throughout the U.S. We also do on-site training or virtual training as well. Uh, feel free to browse our training schedule by visiting our website at b-wi.com backslash training. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our national training manager, Joe Ferret, directly. Uh, he can help you with any uh, interest or, or helping you select the right class, uh, make, uh, make it a little easier for you. And we do have a, a couple more questions here, Dan. Um, get into them. Let's see. Can you render photo lux appearances without ARX? Um, I'm a, I'll make you the presenter again here, so you can. Yeah, so you can you can definitely render them. Um, if you noticed, the the difference is when you go into the render tab, you'll still have the render tab, but under render setup, all you will have here is photo render as opposed to photo lux, and you can see the options are a little different. Okay, it doesn't do the occlusion, it doesn't do the soft shadows. There are some things it won't render the HDR background. Okay. But yeah, you can still definitely render. Alrighty. Uh, next question is can you set the DPI output of a rendering, e.g., 300 DPI? Depending upon what uh, output format you pick, but exactly, like if I come into a TIFF, I can say I want it 300 DPI, I want it 600 DPI, I want it what have you. Okay. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, that is all the questions that we have at the moment here. Um, we will uh, we'll wrap this up. Um, anything else you'd like to, to share in, in closing here, Dan, or? No, not really. Um, you know, hopefully most everybody's already jumped in. Um, you know, like I said, the, the PTC community is a great resource for talking to other people who do it. Um, yeah. And, you know, really just kind of jumping in and getting started is, is the biggest 
thing. Okay. All righty. Um, again, thank you, everybody. Um, and uh, we'll close it out. If you have any questions about today's webcast, uh, send technical questions or any requests to myself, uh, matt.tagnarelli at b-wi.com. Uh, my contact information is listed there below. Uh, and you can take care. I'll follow up with any questions, and, and with your questions, we'll reach out to, to Dan or one of our, our other uh, application engineers and, and put you in, in touch with them as well. So thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you on our next webcast. Uh, next Thursday is a PTC system monitoring webcast, and our next CREO webcast will be November 4th, covering CREO Illustrate. Again, thank you, everybody, uh, uh, for attending, and uh, Look forward to seeing you next week or next month. Uh, have a good weekend. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.